blisters from forming on your foot. I'm gonna go over the top 10 ways to stop blisters from forming on your feet. So whether you're running, whether you're wearing cute shoes, or whether you're trying to wear too little of a shoe, we will help you stop these blisters from forming with great socks, great creams, lots of stuff you have at home right now, and we're starting now. So how did you develop a blister? Is it running too many miles? Is it barefoot running? Is it a wrong or poor fitting shoe? Too small of a shoe or too cute of a shoe as in my kids or wives? Just the wife, not wives, just one wife in case my wife is watching. So let us know in the comment. We love hearing this stuff. We love knowing how to target our videos to help you the most. So help us, we need you. So blisters can be dangerous. A blister can get infected. It can cause cellulitis and it could put you in the emergency room on IV antibiotics. We see it almost every week. So if you do get a big thick blister, be careful with it. If there's redness, if it's hot, if there's thick, creamy, or milky-like discharge, that is an infection. If you feel nausea, vomiting, chills, if your stomach doesn't feel good, that's an infection. If it feels like something is rubbing too much and you're starting to have a lot of pain, you should not be having a lot of pain at your blister site. You should not be having a blister in the first place. Let your podiatrist know. Realistically, in ER, you're gonna sit there for 12 hours and they're just gonna give you a antibiotic no matter what, and it's gonna be really expensive for you. So call your primary care doctor or your podiatrist if you're worried. We will get you in early and we will help you, but that's how you go about a blister. Should you pop it at home, I would always say be safe and leave it to a professional. 95% of the time, healthy people will be okay, but if you get an infection, it's a big deal and you could really hurt yourself. So number one, is if you feel like you're getting a blister, if it's rubbing somewhere in your shoe, stop doing what you're doing. You're probably running too much, or you hike too far, or you're walking in too cute and too pointy of a dress shoe, or a nice high heel. What you want to do is fit your shoe properly. The number one reason people get blisters is the shoe is too small or does not fit properly. Here's what you wanna to do to fit your shoe properly. Make sure you're standing with your foot already swollen at the end of the day. From the morning to the end of the day, your shoe size can increase half a size to one full size. Number two, you, you wanna use our guide and measure your foot properly at home. You wanna make sure the width and the length is proper because you have different types of feet, you have lots of different fitting difficulties that you wanna watch in this video and we'll help you fit it so you can order the proper shoe online or go to the store and be prepared. So this video will help. That's reason number one. Number two way you wanna prevent blisters is you wanna get good socks. Look at these. These are moisture wicking socks. A great sock now with compression, with synthetic technology that wicks away your sweat is like $5 online for a bunch of these. We have them linked in the show notes. We wanna get you good socks that wick away moisture and have you fit properly. So check down in the show notes, but don't go with thick socks that have stitching in the front. You want socks that don't have stitching, that wick away your sweat, and you want to just get good socks, invest in them. It's maybe like a dollar more, and if you're watching this video because of blisters, just get the good socks, you won't regret it. There are great gel pads like this. So see this right here, this will go onto your heel. So simply putting this onto your heel, it will stop heel rubbing in like dress shoes, things like that. There are pads like this that you can put in the back of a tennis shoe. So see, you just pull off the back, it's nice and sticky. See that right there, it stops your heel rubbing. At the same time, if you have heel problems, we have a great video to stop back of the heel blisters right here. If you have big toe joint or bunion blisters, you wanna treat your bunion. So we have a great at home bunion video right here that can help. So I'm gonna link that right here. And the next thing is, if it's a ball of the foot problem, or an arch problem, you want to get yourself an orthotic. 
So here's what an orthotic does. Number one, if you don't have an orthotic, look what happens to my foot. So the front's moving around and the heel's sliding like this. So watch this again. Every time you step, your foot moves. But with an orthotic, look it, it doesn't really move. You don't need an expensive custom orthotic. Look at this. This is like five to $10 right here. You could order this right now and have it delivered to your house in like two, two days and your blisters are gone. Your foot's moving around less. So you wanna get a good orthotic. You wanna put it in a good shoe. That will really help that micro motion and get rid of your blister. Antibiotic creams. If you have rubbing, if you have blisters starting, Neosporin, AAA antibiotic ointment, Silvidine, there's lots of good ones out there. Officially check with your doctor before you use these. Tape. Put a Band-Aid on your heel or on the toe where the blister is, then put some tape over it. So tape acts like a second skin right here. You put that on the back of your heel and it stops rubbing inside your shoe. See, now it's rubbing against the tape. It's like armor. And you don't need duct tape because duct tape's ugly. You can buy more padded tape. So see how much thicker that tape is? That can work really well. There's also athletic tape like this. So hockey tape can work really well. These are great tapes. Before you put on tape though, you want to grab a Band-Aid, put some medication on it, put the Band-Aid on top of the blister. After your blister is healed, you want to grab some petroleum jelly. So open this up, grab a nice scoop and just rub it on your skin. That will let you rub. You can put that on top of the duct tape or the tape on your heel so there's less friction. You can put it in between or on top of your toes if you have hammer toes that are rubbing. So there's a lot of different creams. These are petroleum jellies here, but you could even grab some deodorant, rub some deodorant on your big toe or the back of your heel. Waxes, there's lots of great waxes out there. There are expensive, blister creams, blister tapes. Look at the reviews. We have them linked below. These creams and moisturizing lotions do work really well and they do a great job, but they're not available easily at home. But they work great. Just increase the motion, cracks, dry areas, put lotion on there. On the other hand, if you're too moist, you have to stop yourself from sweating. If you're wearing dress shoes and you're sweating in like a 12 hour work shift, you have to get some moisture wicking socks, number one. And number two, you wanna get some talcum powder or some cornstarch or some anti-sweat powder. There's antiperspirant sprays, just like for your armpits right here, you can get some sprays for your feet. And again, those are linked below, but spraying your feet in the morning can really decrease your sweating and that can decrease the rubbing, the maceration, which means your skin breaking down like you're in a bathtub. This is the sped up version of how to fit your foot at home. A regular piece of paper doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard. Just because the piece of paper is a little too small, unless you go diagonally for some people. Put all your weight on the floor because your foot flattens even more. You can see I'm resting on my other foot here, so I probably should stand on it a little bit more and the foot would be just a little bit wider just a little bit. So I give it a little bit of extra juice. You always wanna be safe when ordering online. Your foot gets just a little bit wider during the day and just a little bit longer. And remember, everybody makes slightly different shoes, so it's always better to go a little bit bigger. So draw out your foot, measure it. It should be in inches if you're in America. Other countries, such as Europe, may use different sizing measurements, especially if you're in India or Europe, and hello to our visitors from those countries. So give it a little bit of extra. See how I gave it a little bit of extra? Then go to a place like Zappos.com. They have great calculators, also a great shoe store. Check the links below for our favorite links to our favorite Zappos shoes. But measure it, use their guides, and you plug in your numbers for width and length, and you use the sizing charts, and you're in great shape with the numbers we gave you. Let us know which one worked best for you. Let us know. If these help, give us some comments, give us some love, and give us some directions to make new great videos for you in the future. We'd love hearing from you.